Okay, so for this lesson, uh, we're going to get into a little bit of how to wire a old style stack relay. Uh, like I've said in my presentation with uh, the primary controls, we did talk about the stack relay. The stack relay is really old technology, but again, it can still be found uh, depending on you know the homeowner or or the business or whatever you know they may still have it and some people still like using them uh, so we do still maybe like to maybe talk about a little bit of how to wire it and maybe go over a little bit of the functions and how it actually works so what you got here is just a kind of a pictorial blown up schematic of you know it's just some of your basic components that you would find on a forced air uh, furnace so, you know, we have our breaker, we have an emergency switch, firematic switch, uh, service switch, we got a fan limit switch. Um, if you don't know what a fan limit switch does, I would probably say you might want to go and view my presentation on uh, the fan limit switch so that you can understand what that component does. We have our blower fan and then obviously the infant a stack relay, and we have a burner motor and our ignition transformer with a thermostat. So, what we're going to do with this particular type of diagram is obviously we have our L1 in neutral, so we know that that's our power and our and our neutral. We want to wire our switches in series with each other. So obviously we have our breaker, so we want to have the breaker come in to our switch. We're going to come out of that switch from our breaker. We're going to go right into the emergency switch, which is at the top of the stairs. The firematic switch, well, that can honestly be a optional, depending on who installed and wired the furnace. Sometimes the firematic switch will be actually located like maybe if it, the furnace is in the basement, it might be like located like right above the furnace, like in the rafters maybe, or somewhere in that vicinity where uh, it could be easily located. Um, that's going to go through there. And then obviously we have our service switch, which is located right at the furnace itself. Now we're going to come and we want to wire in the fan limit switch. So now the fan limit switch really is ultimately just two switches that are wired in parallel with each other. Okay, so we're going to have power coming in over here, and we're going to have power here. Okay, Normally closed, normally open. This guy here is my limit. This guy is going to open up at, if the furnace happens to reach an unsafe uh, temperature, probably around 200 degrees or so. Uh, this guy here is my normally open. This guy is going to close once the furnace reaches around maybe about 140 degrees, maybe 150 degrees, and that will turn on our blower fan. So what I really want to do first is I want to focus just on the limit side of the that fan limit switch. Now remember, the limit is a safety, so I want that to shut off my furnace uh, if I happen to get too hot for whatever reason, say we're over firing, we got too big of a nozzle in there, maybe the blower fan doesn't come on, what have you. So I want this guy to shut off my my burner. So I'm going to bring that power to my terminal one on my stack relay. Now if you look at the stack relay here, look, we got a transformer in there. So this is my primary side of the transformer, this is my secondary side. Okay? And then you got terminals four and three, right? So we'll get there in a minute. So I want to bring power down to my terminal one on my stack relay. Just like that. Boom. So what that's going to do is if this furnace does happen to get overheated, for whatever reason, that's going to open, and that will kill my power to my stack relay. So I'm going to finish that 
circuit with uh, my neutral. My neutral is out of my two. That's going to come right back up to my my N, just like this. Okay. So now I've completed really my first circuit out of the entire operation. So now I want to do my other side of my fan limit switch. I'm going to do my fan side. Now remember, this guy is going to close at approximately maybe about 140, maybe 150 degrees, somewhere in there. This guy is going to close. And when that happens, my blower is now going to come on so that I can start delivering heat to my space. Like that. Okay, so the rest of this is relatively easy. Now, remember, with the stack relay, especially with the RA-117A, Terminal 4 and Terminal 3 are just simply two separate contacts that are going to close uh, to bring on my burner and my ignition transformer. Terminal 3 is for my burner motor. Terminal 4 is actually for my ignition transformer. So all I need to do with this type of diagram is just bring my power from my Terminal 3, and I'm just going to bring that right in to my burner. I'm going to do the same thing with Terminal 4. I'm just going to bring that straight down. I'm going to power up my ignition transformer. The rest of this, my commons, in my neutrals there, I'm just going to bring right back to my my neutral, just like this. Okay. So the last thing that we have is the thermostat. So I got. Well, W, R, and B. Now remember, W, R, and B, this, I'm going to use all three of these if I was actually using maybe like an aquastat or something like that. But since I'm using just a thermostat that's going to be up in, you know, the space, I'm going to be using W and B, or better known as T, T. So I'm going to bring, uh, we can, it does not matter in face of actually, anybody was ever asking, it does not matter which one is actually your R and which one is your W. You can bring it here and to here like that. And I'm just going to use a different color and come back. Or you can actually swap it back and forth. It honestly, it really does not matter. Because all you're doing is just simply making and breaking a contact so that you're energizing and de-energizing a coil which will open and close these contacts. That's really all you're ultimately doing. So really, the sequence of operation for the stack relay. Now remember, the stack relay has a safety timing of around 90 seconds. So we have all of our switches closed. So breaker is going to be on, closed. Emergency switch at the top of stairs is going to be closed. Firematic switch is going to be closed. Service switch is going to be closed. So that's going to send power up to my fan limit switch which will in turn, because this is a normally closed switch, is going to send power down to my primary control, powering up my transformer, right? Thermostat calls for heat. That's going to close. That's going to energize the coil, which is going to close my terminals three and four, which will bring on my burner sequence. Furnace is going to light as long as everything is correct and good to go. After approximately, we'll say, about 90 seconds, the stack relay will know that it lit. Once that happens, my 140, my normally open contact, because now the furnace is going to be all nice and warm, about 140, maybe 150 degrees. Once that happens, that switch actually closes, which will bring on my fan, which will now begin to heat up the space. And that will continue to operate until the thermostat is satisfied. Once the thermostat is satisfied, that opens, which will de-energize the coil, opening my contacts, shutting off my burner sequence. 
once my furnace cools down to probably around about 100 degrees or so, that switch will now open, shutting off my blower. And that is really ultimately how the sequence of operation of an RA-117A stack relay actually works.